So we know that the analytical method validation plays a very important role at all stages of the pharmaceutical product life cycle. ICH and other regulators have provided guidance on the list of the parameters to be studied during the validation, but there is no as such guidance available on which sequence the parameter has to be studied, whether I should perform first specificity and then go for precision. That clarity is not available in any of the guidelines. So as a part of this video, I will try to explain in which sequence the parameters shall be determined for related substances method validation by using an HPLC technique. So you can also relate the same information for another validations too. And I will also talk about the rationals behind proposing one parameter another. Hello and welcome. This is Bhaskar Napte from Pharma Growth Hub and I am on the mission to help pharma professionals to get absolute clarity on various technical aspect. So if you are struggling with technical aspect or career growth and would like to unleash your true potential, join the Pharma Growth Hub today. To know more about the services of the Pharma Growth Hub, join the WhatsApp group of the Pharma Growth Hub by using the link given in the description. Okay, so let us begin with the presentation now. And as you know, the topic of discussion is in which sequence or order the parameters shall be determined for related substances method validation by using HPLC. And according to my knowledge, you can consider this sequence for performing the various parameters. So I will also talk about what is the reason behind putting these parameters into this particular sequence. So what we are going to do is, I will explain the parameter and the activity to be performed and very importantly, why this parameter has to be performed in a suitable sequence. What I propose is now, I propose you to perform specificity as the very first parameter during the related substances validation. So as a part of this specificity, you are supposed to conduct diluent interference. In case if you are performing the uh, validation for drug product, you have to also consider the placebo interference. The third parameter is going to be a impurity interference and the fourth one you need to also understand whether there is any resolution issues coming when you actually spike the impurities into a sample. So that is a spiked taste study. So these are the general four different activities as a part of the specificity. Now you may be wondering where is the forced degradation? So that is also the part of the specificity or selectivity, but I will not perform this forced degradation on very first day. So I will generally perform these four parameters on uh, at the beginning of the validation study as a part of the specificity. Now why these four parameters as a part of specificity has to be performed at the beginning of validation? And here is the explanation. The specificity can impact both precision and accuracy, hence confirmation at an early stage can save lot of potential failure. So I need to first understand that there is no interference and hence my precision and accuracy will not get compromised. Now what is the fun in conducting the accuracy at very first day and then realizing while performing the specificity, oh there is an interference coming at impurity A for example, isn't it? So it is very important to first confirm that the specificity is well achieved and then you can go further. I propose to perform solution stability as the second parameter and solution stability can be determined for standard and the spiked test solution. So you can use the standard and the spike test solution used during the specificity study and you did not to make any fresh standard and test solution for this solution stability performance. So what is the reason? 
Now, without knowing the solution stability, one cannot understand whether a long sample sequence can be planned. Because validation is not a small activity and you may have to perform multiple parameters. You may need to prepare multiple standard, multiple sample solutions. And in case if you do not understand how long the sample solution is stable, how long the standard solution is stable, how you are going to plan the study. So to understand that, you need to first understand whether my solutions are really stable up to two days or not. If you are making a planning of two days sequence. The third parameters that I would recommend is the filter compatibility. And you can again use the standard and spike sample solution prepared during the specificity study. So you need not to prepare any separate solution just for conducting the filter compatibility. So why I am proposing filter compatibility as the third parameter? Because filter paper may influence precision and accuracy and hence confirmation at an early stage can save potential failure. So the filter paper if is not compatible, if your drug substance impurities are getting binded with the filter paper, you may say, okay, there is a lot of uh, repeatability issues during the precision study, but it can be related to just your usage of wrong filter paper, means you are not assess the filter paper the way it has to be assessed. And the same issue can be found during the accuracy study. So first confirm the filter saturation study. First understand whether you need to saturate the filter paper with 3 ml, 4 ml or 5 ml. Determine the saturation volume. And once you determine the saturation volume, then you can at least rule out that the whatever variation that you are observing, maybe during precision study or accuracy study is not belongs to the filter so filter can be ruled out and to rule out that you need to first perform the filter saturation study before you move on to the precision or accuracy now as a part of related substances you also have to determine the limit of determination or the limit of quantification so and this parameter, especially limit of quantification, is required for determining the accuracy and linearity. So how one can perform the linearity and accuracy before knowing the limit of quantification? Certainly not. And hence, you need to consider this LOD and LOQ determination before you start precision and, uh, sorry, linearity and the accuracy study. So you can consider determining LOD and LOQ by signal to noise ratio or by slope and standard deviation method. The another important point that during the LOQ determination, you may be going with the actual requirement of let us say signal to noise ratio should not be less than 10 for uh, LOQ. And if you achieve signal to noise ratio 10, you say, okay, now this is my LOQ. But just understand that you are just confirming the LOQ on one HPLC system. And if that system is having a smooth baseline, a good, uh, you know, the lamp energy, you may end up getting the good amount of signal to noise ratio value. But will it be applicable for the another HPLC where the best baseline is not so good, where the lamp energy is low? So to, under, so to considering all this uh, system, HPLC system's performance, it is always a good idea to determine the LOQ with a little higher signal to noise ratio value. If you get one PPM as an LOQ, it is always better to have the higher value, let us say 1.5 or 2 PPM as LOQ, so that the system to system variation or the baseline variation can be accommodated. Then I recommend to perform the linearity now. As you know that the LOQ is available, so you can plan the linearity for your related substances validation. But again, you understand that there can be differences in the linearity study according to the ICH and according to the NVSA Brazil. So if you are performing the linearity for NVSA Brazil, 
make three different impurity weights and then then they and then perform the linearity in triplicates that is the envis of rajil's requirement in case of ics you can have the single weight and you can make the linearity solutions from that single weight the another important point is sometimes the impurity standards that you are using may not be pure and in case if you have multiple impurities to be mapped for the linearity study and just imagine that the one impurity has an impurity interference at the another impurity's retention time in that case you may not use the common linearity solution you may have to perform the linearity solution for those impurities separately but in case if there is no cross interference coming from the impurities itself or impurity standards itself then the common linearity solution can be used to perform the linearity the another important objective during the linearity can be establishment of relative response factor for the impurities of course so determine the rrf for the known impurities now once you have the rrf once the linearity has been performed then you can plan for the precision and use the rrf that you found during a linearity study for calculation of the impurities present into this spiked sample that you are conducting during the precision study then you can go for the accuracy study and the accuracy can be performed you know at the three levels in three determinations according to the ICH and various another guidelines but here i recommend you to perform the accuracy at uh, lowest and highest uh, uh, levels with six measurements why six because now this six determinations is going to help you to assess your range because we know that the range has to be assessed with three important parameters one is linearity second one is precision and the third one is the accuracy now at what level the precision has to be determined the precision has to be determined at the lowest concentration and at the highest concentration now this is the time that you can accommodate six measurements at the lowest concentration and six measurement at the highest concentration so you need not to perform the range as a separate parameter so rather than making three determinations at the lowest and highest accuracy level make six determinations so that you are going to cover accuracy as well as the range study now you may be having question that okay if i perform the accuracy at uh, uh, 150% which is my highest level in the accuracy study with the six determinations now out of the six i have to only report three accuracy levels so can i report the first preparation uh, the second preparation and the third preparation or in case if the third preparation is not meeting the accuracy can i report the fourth preparations so to avoid this dilemma make sure in the protocol itself that the which three determination has to be reported for the recovery study so the first three determination can be considered for reporting the accuracy study and then the entire six determination can be considered for reporting the percent rsd study to suffice the requirement of the range so again the one parameter we talked that is the precision but that is that was the repeatability study right now as a part of method precision you need to conduct the either intermediate precision or the reproducibility again you will prepare the six uh, test solution by spiking the impurities at their defined concentration level now what is the definition of uh, their defined concentration level the defined concentration level is nothing but the specification of the impurities now as there is a related substances method you may have the two specifications one is your release specification and the second one is your stability specification so the question can be which specification has to be followed 
during performing the precision study and I propose to perform the precision according to the release specification. The reason is for the release specification is always the stringent one which is having the lower concentration as compared to the stability specification. So if you prove that look here now my method is precise at the stringent specification at the lower concentration. So you can also justify that it will be precise at the higher concentration which is actually my stability specification. So perform the intermediate precision on different day on using different instrument by the different analyst. The next parameter will be the range now. So as you know that you have the linearity data, accuracy data and the, uh, the precision data from the highest and lowest accuracy level, the reporting the range is uh, not an, a difficult task for you. The, the tenth parameter is the forced degradation now. So as we said that you start the validation with the specificity parameters. But during that time, I haven't asked you to perform the force degradation. So you can conduct the force degradation at the latter phase of the validation. And you know what are the parameters to be conducted during force degradation like hydrolysis by water or at a different pH like acidic, alkaline pH, the thermal degradation, light degradation, the oxidation degradation can be conducted. Uh, is there anything missing in the force degradation? I hope not. And then you can understand the peak purity, the mass balance, the percent degradation, etc. But as I said that the force degradation can be performed at the latter phase of the validation. I assume that you have performed the force degradation during the method development. It is very important to conduct the mini validation kind of thing during the method development itself. And then finally, the robustness is the parameter which you can think of performing. Now during the robustness, you may be measuring the system suitability and you may have to understand how the results are getting deviated from the actual result value. Now what is mean by actual result value? The actual result value means nothing but the in case if you do not conduct any kind of uh, variation, you conduct the analysis exactly as per your test procedure what is the result that you are getting and as a part of robustness you are now conducting the variations maybe the pH variation maybe the variation into the column temperature or organic content into the mobile phase these are called as the deliberate variations made during performing the robustness study so you have the analytical result for the spiked sample as per exact test parameters and then you have the analytical result with the variation study and then you are going to understand what is the difference between these two results and if the difference between these two results is within the acceptance criteria for example you have the acceptance criteria that the result should not uh, deviate by more than 10 percent and then you'll say okay look here now the results are not beyond 10 percent and hence the method is robust so the here the one challenge is now you must understand that whatever sample or the spike sample that you are using for as such method parameter and with the deliberate method parameter change they must be prepared from the common stock so that it will become very easy for comparing the uh, uh, the differences while conducting the robustness study so comparison will be easy if same stock is used for making spike sample for as such method and the variation study. I hope now you have the better understanding on selecting the order of parameters during the related substances validation. Thank you so much.